Hello and welcome to the Digital Assets Report. I'm Jane King at the New York Stock Exchange. And with me today, as always, Vince Molinari, uh, the CEO of Liquid Impact Capital. Hello, welcome back, Jane. Vince. Great to see you again. And also Patsy Dorr, the Global Head of Corporate Responsibility, Sustainability and Inclusion for Thomson Reuters. So yes. welcome, Vince Thank and you. Patsy. Thank um, you. So Patsy, let's start with you. Tell me exactly what your job encompasses. Sure. So, so basically what I do for the organization is I run what we call social impact. So everything from sustainability in terms of our relationship with our environment through to corporate social responsibility or we call community investment, how we engage with our communities around the globe, as well as diversity and inclusion. And so that's really about gender equality and other aspects of diversity. And what we do in this space, because we built it from scratch over the past six years, is we focus both internally on engaging our employees on these topics mm -hmm. and externally on getting the message out there within our communities and the business community as well. Okay, so why does uh, Thomson Reuters feel like this is vital to its future? It's a great question. Um, what they're seeing, or what we're seeing actually, and a lot of companies are starting to make this move, is, is three things. Number one, talent within the organization is really requiring of it, particularly millennials who really make decisions on companies they're going to work for. In fact, eight out of ten millennials will decide on a company they're working for based on their focus on social impact. Okay. So trying to bring that talent into the organization and retain the talent that we have. And then secondly, you've got the customer base. So all of our customers are asking, what are you doing around social impact and actually asking for us to report on it in RFPs. And so we've seen in the past year alone an 84% increase in RFPs asking about our social impact efforts. Wow. It's really, yeah, it's really growing rapidly. That's where we are in the world right now. Is this Absolutely. is something that people care a lot about. So Vince, are That's you right. seeing this with other organizations as well? Well, frankly, not nearly as, as much as Thomson Reuters is taking the lead. And, and uh, it's one of our great attractions to Thomson Reuters is they really become a beacon for walking the walk. Right, so this has been an inward outward movement as we looked at what Thompson has really been doing. They've done it themselves, they've done it holistically internally, and now they're they're exporting it or showing the rest of the world through their leadership of how to take these steps. Mm -hmm. And we think that's a wonderful process and really creating tremendous engagement for all the reasons that Patsy pointed out to you, both employee retention, recruiting, valuation, we think we think access to capital, it's all becoming very tied in. Yeah, and well, and I think too, with uh, Thomson Reuters' mm -hmm. access to all these global areas through the media, they're kind of on the ground and they see some of these global problems firsthand. So, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and I think in two ways to kind of elaborate on that point. Number one, we're a data organization at our heart, right? So we've got environmental, social governance data that we can use, package, mm -hmm. and curate okay. in a way that helps our customers and investors make decisions. And then secondly, to your point, because we are such a vast network and we consider ourselves a connector, if you will, of bringing organizations together to have the discussion around these topics and we can utilize that through our media channels very easily. Sure. And what about women's issues? I know you have a particular focus on that. Yes, that has been a, very, a big focus for us over the past six years since our CEO, Jim Smith, took his position. Very strong view that diversity and inclusion is important to the organization, not only for engagement, as we talked about, but we know that a more diverse workforce actually drives innovation, productivity, and the bottom line. Mm -hmm. So this past year alone, we made a very aggressive goal, in fact, he announced that we're going to achieve 40% women in leadership globally across the organization by 2020. So we're working on that as we speak. We've set the foundation over the past few years, but now we're heavily focused on reaching that target. Okay, now Vince, Patsy touched on this a little bit. I mean, this obviously um, is great for just humanity mm -hmm. overall, but it also it could be a potential investment opportunity as well. I think we're at that say intersection of multiple paradigms uh, shifting at once. So if you're talking about visibility awareness, you're talking about corporate conduct, you're talking about transparency of organizations, stakeholders believing in the organizations uh, which they're doing business with and having that level of trust who are becoming consumers and those consumers becoming stakeholders. So it's a very holistic approach where it's not greenwashing of the old days of corporations wanting to do something for visibility. People are really looking to the core DNA of the organizations. And I think this is where Thomson Reuters continues to excel. And the more you can use those great tools of data, analytic, and broadcasting ability, I think the more you can transition that to the last mile of connectivity, and we're talking about using blockchain yeah. tokenization for that, where we can continue to scale and much more efficiently and have an immutable narrative, and capture all those analytics along the way and move capital yeah. through it. So go into Absolutely. that a little bit more, like how could digital assets help further the goals of Thomson Reuters? 
Well, I think it's Thompson Reuters. I think it's the sustainable development goals, as we talked about generally. Uh, how do we bring levels of private sector capital to the sustainable development goals? Because we firmly believe the more private sector capital we can engage globally, the more success or levels of success that by 2030, the goals of the sustainable development goals will be reached. Mm -hmm. So Patsy, what are you most excited about in this area? Everything. <laughs> These are exciting times. <laughs> well, the fact that I think that the world is opening up to the reality of the need for these issues to be addressed, right, with the sustainable development goals as a phenomenal framework, right, it's so vast in what we're trying to achieve. But I'm finding that in my work internally and externally, that so many organizations get the point now. This is no longer a soft issue, right? It is absolutely 100% a necessary, hard issue, if you will, because as we mentioned, it impacts the bottom line at the end of the day, and trends follow the money. Right. And so I think at the end of the day, I'm, I'm most excited about that and the commitment that we and other organizations have to making this change. Okay, and uh, International Women's Day, that kind of fits into all of this as well. Vince, can you talk a little bit more about that? And I love being the guy talking about <laughs> International Why Women's not? Day. Right? Absolutely. Yes. Well, and, and I think this is areas that we're looking to hopefully work very closely uh, with Patsy and Thompson Reuters. International Women's Day, March 8th, right? This is, this is about bringing visibility. It's amplifying the story. It's Year of Women. And if we can create financial inclusion, gender equality, there's so many issues around the globe that begin to be solved. It's the wisdom, it's the brain trust, it's, it's better education, it's poverty alleviation, it's better health care. And if we can truly engage the global brain trust of women's around, women around the world and utilize International Women's Day, declare it Year of Women, well, I think we can really move the needle significantly. Okay, March 8th. So we'll look for yeah. a lot of things around March 8th about Absolutely. International Year of the Women. So just one more quick question. I know this is going to be, I know there's a million problems out there, but is there one that you feel like is the either needs to be addressed immediately or perhaps the solving of that problem will lead to others? So is there one that you're really targeting? First and Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, as you said, there are so many different possibilities and so many issues and opportunities. But if we think about the sustainable development goals as our framework again, I think the most critical right now is gender equality because although it sounds very targeted and very focused, it really is much broader than that. If we're able to engage 50% of our population around the globe, which are women, in a different way to look more broadly at how they can contribute to solving the sustainable development goals by 2030, we are then harnessing or unlocking so much potential through our population, so many different resources, both from a monetary perspective, but also from having a voice within their organizations and as well as consumers. Okay, and that could lead to things like more uh, better health care and uh, better economic opportunities, and of course that has a ripple effect down the road. Absolutely, education yeah. being a key component yeah. of that as well. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, and best thank of you, luck. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. So, uh, very important goals as we see the world change for the better. So thank you very much, Patsy Dorr with Thompson Reuters, also yeah. Vince Molinari, a CEO of Liquid M Capital. And thank you as well for joining us on the Digital Assets Report. I'm Jane King at the New York Stock.